Hold up. Welcome back to the channel. It's Marissa. Thank you so much for watching. I'm not going to get into a long spiel of why I haven't uploaded and why I haven't made a missing persons video in a couple weeks. Life's been crazy. I'm a single mom. I work full time and I was running into a lot of issues with my cases and I just wanted to be very, very thorough and accurate. So I scratched all those ideas and started over. Also, I love to do cases that I actually really care about and really passionate about and kind of been like obsessing over. So this is one of them where I feel like I know enough to relay the information. We're just going to go ahead and get started. Today's going to be on Brooklyn Farling. She was an 18 year old woman that went missing on June 22nd of 2013 she went missing from Kentucky and we're gonna get into her characteristics and description let me just make sure I don't mess it up she was 5'1 weighed 105 pounds she had long blonde hair brown eyes she was last seen wearing a gray shirt jeans and we believe that she was not wearing any shoes we will get into that further into the video. So let's just get into the circumstances. Now the circumstances are this was a Friday night. Brooklyn, her younger sister Paige, and her cousin all went to a house party after they had just taken their driver's test. Now Brooklyn passed. She was very excited to be able to drive on her own. Her sister Paige unfortunately did not. So in attempts to cheer her up, they did all go to this party together. About an hour into it, Paige and the cousin decided to So leave. after the cousin and Paige left, Brooklyn was there left alone, but that was not a big deal. She did know the, this crowd of people very and well. She did have a ride home and she did have a place that she was going to be staying that night. Unfortunately, those plans fell through when the, the female she was supposed to leave with, they did have some type of altercation and argument and Brooklyn was left with no ride and, you know, nowhere else to go. But having said that, she didn't seem too worried about it. So she must have felt comfortable with a group of people that still remained at the party. But as hours went on and it was getting later and people were starting to leave, she did find herself left with two men. The one man's name is Josh, who's going to be very important in this case. The other man, I didn't, I couldn't find his name anywhere, but I guess it doesn't really matter. Um, the other man was severely intoxicated and he did want to get home, so Brooklyn did offer to drive him home. She was eager to use her new license. She didn't have a vehicle though, so the other man at the party did offer for her to use the vehicle as long as she brought it back. So she did take this this man home that was intoxicated. I don't know how intoxicated Brooklyn was or if she was at all. Clearly, she felt sober enough to take him home. Um, I guess it doesn't really matter, but I just wanted to put in perspective that I don't believe Brooklyn was, like, trashed at this point if she felt comfortable enough to use her new license to drive this man home. Shortly after she arrived to Josh's home to return the car, um, announced to her, the house is in total disarray. There's no electricity, no running water. It was a foreclosed home, so I would assume she felt uncomfortable right from the get-go. So she did call her younger sister Paige and asked if... Um, Paige or the cousin or whoever could come get her because she needed to ride home. According to Paige, who is her sister, who I feel like could read her sister very well, said that Brooklyn sounded like she was fine in her right mind. She didn't seem scared. She didn't seem like she was intoxicated. Um, Paige even said, you know, the cousin couldn't come get her because she had been drinking and she was sleeping, but she could go wake up their mother if she really needed a ride. And Brooklyn said, Never mind, that's fine. Don't wake up, Mom. Jared's coming to get me when he gets off his shift. Um, she told Paige, you can lock the door, but listen for me when I come home. You know, I'll be home in a couple hours. So they left it at that. But shortly after she hung up with her sister Paige, she did start texting her friends saying that she was scared. She was uncomfortable. Someone please hurry up and get her. And Jared was coming to get her, but she did have to wait two hours, so I think she was kind of freaking out that she had to stay there for another two hours. About an hour before Jared is gonna come get Brooklyn, so around 5.30 a.m., he gets a text from her phone saying, never mind, you don't need to come get me, I'm going to another party in Rock, Rock Castle County, sorry, I had to make sure I said that right. So she's telling him after two hours or so of begging people for a ride, saying she's uncomfortable, she wants to just to go home and sleep. Now all of a sudden she's, never mind, she doesn't need a ride, she's going to another party at six in the morning. Doesn't seem likely, she was definitely not like a partier in that type of way. 
she clearly wanted to go. I'm thinking it, you're thinking it, and her family's thinking it, that that text saying, never mind, don't come get me, was not sent from Brooklyn. So, at 7 a.m., this is where it just gets totally weird and bizarre. At 7 a.m., the fire department was called to that house, Josh's house, um, because there was a fire in the living room. So, the story goes that there was a fire in Josh's living room, and the only thing that was burnt was a couch. The whole entire couch was burnt, and there was actually, like, a hole kind of burnt into the floor underneath the couch. According to Josh, when he knew Jared was about to come pick up Brooklyn, he felt awkward being there when the ex-boyfriend came and got her, so he went to tend to his horses on the farm. He said he, he left Brooklyn on the couch, she was smoking a cigarette, which I can't find anywhere if she was a smoker. I'm assuming she was, or else the family probably would have made that into a big deal, like, that she wasn't smoking, like, she wasn't on the couch smoking, she doesn't smoke, so I'm assuming she smokes, or else somebody probably would have brought that up by now. Um, he says he left her on the couch, she was smoking a cigarette, he went to tend to the horses, and he was gonna not be in the house when the ex-boyfriend came to pick her up, because he felt uncomfortable. So, he says he came back into the house, and the house was on fire, and Brooklyn was gone. Brooklyn's stuff was at the house. Her shoes, so you're saying she left without her shoes, her phone was missing, her purse was still there, which her family says she would never leave her belongings behind, even if there was a fire or something like that, she had to get out of there. Like, it just doesn't make sense that there was a fire at this house, she just disappeared, she didn't take any of her stuff, her phone was missing, so it's like she did take her phone, but she didn't even put on her shoes, like, it just seems a little strange. And also, where did she go? She didn't have a ride. Oh, well, she, Jared never came and got her. None of her friends came and got her. So how did she leave? So Josh's story to the police was just that, that he wasn't, that he came back. The house was on fire. Brooklyn was gone. That she had mentioned she was going to another party in Rock Castle County and that someone must have picked her up. Um... Nobody believes that. That's a total crack of shit. So, what's crazy about all of this is that couch, like, was the only thing burnt to a crisp. And everyone believes there was some type of evidence on that couch, rather it been that was a murder scene, that was um, maybe where she got raped, like, if there was blood, semen, hair, something on that couch was destroyed for a reason. So... That was the evidence we all needed to probably solve this case, or at least get a, a big lead. So, the couch is destroyed. Josh acts like he has no idea what happened. <laughs> that he, he doesn't know if Brooklyn started the fire. Like, how does a fire start when there's no electricity in the house? So this case in particular is just so frustrating because it seems so obvious that Josh had something to do with this, that he killed her, he put her body somewhere. Um, I'm not believing anything that he's saying about his house just suddenly was on fire and Brooklyn was just missing. I don't believe she sent that text message about going to another party. I believe, you know, that was just to get Jared to not come pick her up and to buy him some time. It's just, it kind of blows my mind and makes me so frustrated and sad that it's been almost five years and there's still no answers and no one's been held accountable for this when clearly Josh knows exactly what happened. Where she went missing, where her phone was pinging, the area is just super uh, dense. There's a lot of forest, there's a lot of cliffs, there's bodies of water. Her phone was actually ringing all the way through for about three days after her disappearance, which makes me believe that she is not in a body of water because just the way phones are. Back in the day, when phones were in water, like, they were done. Towers could not, like, penetrate a body of water. Um, so if she was in a body of water, her phone would just have no activity, no pings, it wouldn't ring. It'd just be done. So it makes me believe she is not in a body of water. And um, a lot of people do believe that her body will be be found by accident every year when hunting season starts you know the police think this is going to be the year someone's going to like walk up on her body her bones her phone and it just hasn't happened yet and this is just so irritating to me because 
Josh did something or he knows something and I just don't understand. Um, her sister was talking on a podcast and it just like, it really just hit me. Like, I'm trying not to get emotional. Sorry about that. So it just, um, it really hit me when her sister was speaking that victims have no rights and these people that have possibly done something awful have all the rights in the world. What she meant by that is whenever they would try to search something of Josh's or get more information about Josh, you know, the police department would be like, well, we can't do that because it's breaking XYZ law. But Brooklyn doesn't get any justice. Um, her, all her rights were taken away from her, most likely. She's most likely not with us anymore. You know, hidden somewhere, buried somewhere. And so what about Josh's rights? The, I mean, that's just how I feel because it just is frustrating. But like, so what about Josh's privacy? He clearly was the last one to be with her and he knows something. It's just, it blows my mind that people are just accepting, not necessarily just accepting it for what it is. I mean, her family, the police department, they're still trying to figure this out. They still do search parties. They're still looking for her body, her phone. Um, they still spread the information. They've got benefits for her t-shirt. There's still a billboard up on the highway of her. The police did say she's like a family name. Everyone knows of this case and it it's haunting this police department that they can't just resolve it and bring closure to the family. I just think of times in my life, you think back of like the stupid shit you did when you were younger and all the situations you got yourself into with maybe sketchy people or at a sketchy party, um, maybe where alcohol was involved you just think wow like i got really lucky to be here other people as lucky sorry that i got weird and emotional in this video <laughs> but i wanted to just get it out that was the video on brooklyn if you want to hear more about her story she is on the vanish podcast you could just google it um i will leave any information if you do know anything have any tips if you um heard anything regarding Josh or regarding any type of information for this case, please, please, please call it in. This family deserves closure. So thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel, like my video if you enjoyed it. Please leave in the comments any suggestions of future cases that I can do, and I will talk to you guys later.